Welcome back. Now that we've covered the transformations of absolute value, as well as how to graph absolute value using transformations, I want to talk about something called mappings. Mappings are simply a set of rules that transforms each point of, of one function into another function. Basically, it's like saying, how do we get from point A to point B? If I want to turn function A into B, what do I have to do to it? In practical terms, it's like saying, if I'm at the high school and I want to go to the grocery store, how do I get there? You might say, turn left, drive straight for four miles, and then turn right. The same principles apply here. For example, I want to know how to transform or map f of x, which is the orange line, to g of x, which is the blue line. So the orange line is my starting location, and the blue line is my ending location, and I want to know the directions of how to get from the orange to the blue. Well, in this case, we're going to start with the vertices. We're going to compare them just like we did when we wrote the equations of lines, but instead of using the parent function, we're going to use the starting function. In this case, that's the orange line. So to go from the orange line to the blue line, we're first going to have to go down 4, And then we're going to have to go to the right, 8. Now the blue line did not flip when compared to the orange line. And then did the size change? Well, if we're on the orange line, going up 1 from the vertex and over 1 puts us on the graph. On the blue one, going up 1 and over 1 still puts us on the graph. So the size didn't change. So simply, to go from the orange one to the blue one, the transformations are simply down 4 and right 8. Don't turn this into an equation. We're not looking for an equation. We're not looking for a destination. We're looking for the directions. Let's look at another one. In this case, again, we're starting with the orange line, and we're going to end at the blue line. So in this case, we have to go up 9, And then we have to go to the right, 8. And now this blue one is inverted compared to the orange one. So it's flipped or inverted. And then did the size change? Well, if I go up one over one, I'm still on the orange one. Now this one's flipped, so I'm going to go down one instead of up. If I go down one over one, I'm still on the function, so there was no size change. So to transform the orange line into the blue line, we're going to go up 9, right 8, and invert it. Try this one. Now sometimes we may just be given the equations, not the graphs. Now, one way of tackling this is to go to Desmos, and you could graph both of them and do what we were just doing. But you can also do this without graphing. We know that we want to go from f of x to g of x. So f of x is going to be our starting point, and g of x is going to be our ending point. So we have a start, and we have an end. And we want to know how do we go from the start to the end. So the question is how. Well, now we just compare the different parts of the equations. For example, we can look at the outside numbers. We're starting at 3, and we're ending at negative 4. And the question is, well, how do we get there? And that's going to be minus 7. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. And so minus 7 on the outside means down 7. Then we can compare the inside numbers. Well, I'm starting at 2. I'm ending at negative 1. How do I get from 2 to negative 1? What do I have to add or subtract with 2 to get negative 1? Well, to do that, I have to subtract 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So this is inside. So remember, subtracting is right, adding is left. So if I have to subtract 3 on the inside, that's going to be right 3. And then I move to the front. Well, the signs didn't change, and the numbers didn't change in front. And so the only transformations we need to go from f of x to g of x is down 7, right 3. Let's look at another one. So again, we're going from f to g. f is our starting point. g is our ending point. And our question is, how do we get there? 
So I'm going to start on the outside. And I'm starting at a plus 1, and I'm ending at a negative 6. So what plus 1 gives me negative 6? Well, that's going to be a minus 7. 1 minus 7 gives me a negative 6. So again, a minus 7 on the outside means down 7. Then I'm going to compare the insides. Well, in the inside, I'm starting at negative 5, and I'm ending at negative 3. So what combined with negative 5 gives me negative 3? Well, that's going to be a plus 2. Negative 5 plus 2 gives me negative 3. So a plus 2 on the inside is going to be a left 2. Finally, I'm going to look at the outside. The signs are the same, but the numbers aren't. Remember, if nothing's there, I could put a 1 there. So I have a 1 in front, and then I have a 2 in front of the second one. Now, again, because these numbers are in front, we're multiplying. We're not adding or subtracting. So it's going to be 1 times what gives me 2. So 1 times 2 gives me 2. And so multiplying by 2 is the transformation I need. And again, when it's in front, it's a stretch or compress. If it's bigger than 1, it's a stretch. So it's going to be a stretch of 2. So to transform f into g, we're going to go down 7, left 2, and we're going to stretch it by 2. Again, the question hasn't changed. Describe the transformations that map f to g. So f will be our starting point, g will be our ending point. And we want to know how do we get from the start to the end. So I'm going to just start looking at the outside. I start at negative 7, I end at 1. So start at negative 7, end at 1. How do I go from negative 7 to 1? I'm going to add 8. Negative 7 plus 8 is 1. If I add 8 on the outside, a positive number means I'm going up, so this is going to be up 8. What about the inside? Well, I'm starting at negative 1, and I'm ending. There's nothing there. So what I could put there is a 0, x plus 0. So I'm ending at 0. So negative 1 plus what gives me 0? Well, that's 1. Negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. So I'm doing a plus 1 on the inside. A plus 1 on the inside means left 1. And then I compare the front. Again, the signs didn't change, so I don't have to worry about inverting it. But I'm starting at 3. I'm ending at 1. And now again, because these numbers are in front, we're multiplying them with the absolute value. I have to look at multiplying, not adding or subtracting. So 3 times what gives me 1? And that's going to be 1 third. 3 times 1 third is 1. It's kind of like saying 3 times what is 1. Divide both sides by 3 and you get 1 third. So again, if the number is greater than 1, it's a stretch. If it's between 0 and 1, it's compressed by 1 third. So to go from F to G, I have to go up 8, left 1, and compress it by 1 third. Try this one on your own. Now once in a while, we may be given a situation where we have the beginning function, and we have the transformations that we want to apply to that function, but we don't have the equation of the transformed function. We don't have the ending point. So we have the start, and we have the directions, but we don't have the end. And so these situations are actually easier than the last set. So we want to find out what is g of x, what is the destination. So in this case, we are looking for an equation because we're given the mappings, we're giving the directions. So I'm going to have g of x is equal to some absolute value function. And now what am I going to do to this original function? I'm going to first move it left. So moving it left means I'm going to add on the inside. So I'm going to take this inside number and I'm going to add 5 to it. So 5 plus 2 is going to give me 7. So the inside is going to be x plus 7. And then I'm going to move it up 6. So we're going to move it up 6, and up 6 is a plus 6, where? On the outside. 
So I'm going to take this number on the outside, negative 3, and I'm going to add 6 to it. So 6 minus 3 is going to be a positive 3. So it's going to be plus 3. And then I have no more transformations, and I don't have anything else written in front of it. So the transform function of g of x is going to be the absolute value of x plus 7 plus 3. I took f of x, and I moved it left 5 and up 6 to get this resulting function. Let's look at another one. So again, we're given the starting point f of x. We're given the directions, moving it up 1, stretching it by 2, and inverting it. And we want to find the end point. We want to find what is g of x. And again, we know it's going to end up being some absolute value function of x. So we're going to start by saying, okay, let's move f of x up 1. Well, up 1 is a plus 1 on the outside. So I'm going to take the number on the outside and combine it with the plus 1. So I have plus 1 and minus 1, which just gives me 0. Which means I could put a plus 0 on the outside, but it's really not needed. So I don't have anything on the outside anymore. Then I want to stretch it by 2. So stretching it by 2 means I'm going to multiply the number in front by 2. Well, in this case, the number in front is just a 1. So it's going to be 2 times 1, which is just 2. So I'm going to put a 2 in front. And then I'm going to invert it. Well, how do I invert it? Well, I change the sign or put a negative in front of the absolute value. So this one is already positive. So a positive and a negative just becomes a negative. So I flip it by changing the sign in front. And now that's all the transformations, but I didn't do anything with the plus 5. So the plus 5 remains. I didn't transform it. So to transform f of x into g of x by moving it up 1, stretching it by 2, and inverting it, you get g of x is equal to negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 5. Try this one on your own. So that's all there is to mappings. It's just simply asking, how do I transform f of x into g of x? It's just directions. How do I get from point A to point B?